Texas. 850 miles from Orange to El Paso. 900 miles from Brownsville to Tex Line. Thousands upon thousands of highways and dirt roads in the middle. Exploring Texas ain't no small vacation, friend. It's a lifetime endeavor. But what if you don't have years, but just one single day? Well, that's where we come in. From the well-known landmarks to the completely obscure dives and hideaways, and all within a day's reach. So let's hit the road. I'm Chet Garner, and this is The Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Today we're headed to a very special city. You might call it weird, but Texas just calls it its capital. It's Austin. Austin! Austin is about 80 miles northeast of San Antonio, about 100 miles south of Waco, and reachable from almost countless other towns as a day trip. Besides being the capital of Texas and the live music capital of the world, it's also the day tripper's first official day trip to the big city. All right. But with the city so big, we gotta do things a little different. So that, just north of the river, is downtown Austin. North of that's the capital, and behind that is UT. And we're not gonna do any of it. You see, the best way to conquer a big city is to break it up into smaller pieces. And today, we're spending the whole day south of the river in South Austin. Sounds easy, right? Well, not exactly. With areas like South Congress, South First, and South Lamar. So where to begin? Time to kick this day into high gear. Turbo style. Now we're talking, and we're about to be sipping Joe's, a local latte lover's coffee stand. I'm ordering one of their signature drinks, the Ice Turbo, a kick you in the pants mix of chocolate, hazelnut, coffee, and espresso, along with milk, half and half, and sweetened condensed milk. Phew. It's a bit like having a milkshake for breakfast disguised as coffee. This will get the day going. Which is fine by me. No, I love you so much. Joe sits right in the mix on South Congress, one of Austin's most vibrant shopping, eating, and people watching areas. Local eats, local treats, local feats. With businesses here as diverse as the folks walking the street. This is Uncommon Objects, a store that's a bit hard to describe. A bit like a museum, a bit like a high-end art gallery, and a bit like your grandma's living room. Somebody uh, called us your crazy uncle's attic on steroids. So I think that, that kind of <laughs> is really ad, apropos, yeah. It fits. This is Steve Wyman, the owner of Uncommon Objects. But regardless of how you define this place, it's definitely a good spot to browse around. I think that's my grandpa's old license plate. Uncommon Objects has 25 buyers scouring the country for unique items that somebody, somewhere, might want in their living room. Or creepy baby doll headroom. I think one of the things that we've got right now that's amazing is the uh, antique blueprint machine. It's from the uh, late 1800s, and it's just something nobody's ever seen. And it looks like a time machine. It looks like a uh, magic trick Houdini escape thing. <laughs> Your eyes just go blind. It's like you could walk through this place probably 50 times and still not see everything. But it's not just eye candy. South Congress has mouth candy too at Big Top Candy Shop, a circus themed candy store and old fashioned soda fountain. From the normal sweet tooth remedies to the not so normal ones. Lion Bar, the Curly Word, <laughs> Coffee Crisp. This is stuff from all over the world. I've never seen any of these. Stuff decisions, stuff decisions. Squirrel nut zippers. That's one for you, Richie. Oh, root beer bottles. No licorice. Ever had chocolate covered bacon? How about a wasabi milkshake? They can even whip you up one of over a million classic soda combinations. 
<laughs> now from imported candy to imported folk art at Tesoros Trading Company with crazy goods imported from over 20 different countries. Richie, I just need to borrow some sweats. The king of pop has returned. <laughs> and we haven't even mentioned the clothing. From high end to honky tonk to just plain ridiculous. So I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret of mine. It's my own private costume closet. This is Lucy in Disguise, an Austin original keeping Texas in character since 1984 with literally every costume you can imagine. Uh, Elvis. Yes. Darth Vader. Yes. Predator. Yes. Gizmo. Yes. Zach Morris. Yes. Kelly Kapowski. Yes. Olive oil. Yes. Dang it. <laughs> if you can dress like it, they've got it. Aladdin, Land of the Lost, Jar Jar Binks, Luke Skywalker. Yes. Uh, well, yep, plain ridiculousness for any occasion. Costume contest, Halloween party, random Saturday night when you're at home. I forgot to mention Crazy Texas Travel Show. In fact, any of these guys look familiar? And of course, there's the ones I'm saving for season three. King George. Yes. Uh, Marie Antoinette. Decapitated Clown. Yes. <laughs> Michael J. Fox. Yes. Uh, from Back to the Future. Yes. And Teen Wolf. And Teen Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy's just one of the many businesses doing its best to keep Austin weird. Here's something else a bit weird. We'll talk about it over lunch. Lunch in a trailer park. I'm talking about food trailers. These mobile feasts have been popping up all over the city, not just South Austin. The result is an explosion of creativity, both in the food they serve and the names they serve it under. Grab tiny sandwiches at Along Came a Slider, Indian at Garage Mahal, mmm, bananas, miso hungry for Japanese, coat and tie for Thai food, ever had biscuits in Groovy, or the coffee trailer for coffee out of a trailer. Okay, so not all the names are groundbreaking, but Austin's trailer culture is. It's even caught the attention of some pretty big foodie folks. Bobby Flay threw it down with Flip Happy Crepes. Adam Richman of Man Vs. Food called the Mighty Cone one of his favorite meals ever. And Anthony Bourdain, well, he did whatever he does. It's a cultural phenom. A trip around Austin can take you around the globe. France, Africa, Vietnam, Cuba, Korea, Morocco, Louisiana. So the difficulty isn't in finding the trailers, it's picking which one to eat at. I'm here on South First and to my left I have Torchies, devilishly good tacos. Then over here on my right, I got Man Bites Dog. Hot dog's so good, you go ravenous. Ah, uh, you know how I roll. I'll just eat it both. First up, Torchies Tacos. But before grubbing, I grabbed the owner, Mike Ripka. How'd you start this place? A lot of credit card debt and some crazy ideas. I've been cooking probably since I was about 13 or 14 years old. and uh, Had a love affair with tacos? Pretty much, pretty much. I partnered up with a friend of mine, and so we started talking and said, hey man, let's, let's open a taco stand. Let's bring back some street food culture to the to the world of Austin. And yeah, you got some crazy stuff on the menu. Yeah. Are these all your concoctions? Pretty much. Uh, we started off with three tacos, and uh, we just had a chicken, a beef, and a barbacoa taco, and it gave us a chance to kind of fool around with stuff, yeah. try different ingredients, and whatever sold well, we put it on a menu. So. A pretty full menu of stuff tried and true recipes yes. that people love. Yes, exactly. So what was your favorite taco? Uh, green chili pork. Yeah, and what about you? Green chili pork. <laughs> green chili pork. Yeah. We have a crowd favorite. Yes. What's your favorite? The fried avocado. Ah, that sounds tasty. And you? I like the trailer park. Extra trashy. Extra trashy. <laughs> it's as if the trailer park wasn't trashy enough. That's right. The queso is amazing. The Obviously. habanero sauce that they put in it makes it just extra spicy. A little extra kicker? Yes. Don't get it on your lips. It burns. <laughs> For days. Yeah. Looks like I still have some tough decisions to make. Okay, okay. One trailer park and also a fried avocado taco. <laughs> Torchy's tacos. I got two. First one, fried avocado. Look at that. Over here, the trailer park taco. Make it trashy. Takes the lettuce out and puts queso on. It's got a fried chicken strip, pico de gallo, green chilies, trailer park food. Here I come. 
That is delicious. I don't know if you could call this really Tex-Mex. This is some kind of crazy taco concoction. And now, the fried avocado taco. These may be the devil's tacos, but I feel like I'm in heaven. But I gotta save room. There's still a dog I need to bite. A specialty hot dog whipped up by this guy. The man who bit the dog. This is Jeremiah. How's it going, Jeff? Hey, hey, good, man. So have you had a, a love affair with hot dogs your whole life? Um, as a kid, it was simple. It was, it was white bread and a weenie and ketchup. And so <laughs> we wanted to do something simple but that we could expand on and be as gourmet or as silly as we want. And uh, hot dogs seem to fit that. Yeah. <laughs> People are doing crazy stuff. So I wanted to get in there and do that, too. And he has, with dogs like the Cuban dog and the buffalo hottie with wing sauce and blue cheese, which raises the question, is there anything you can't put on a hot dog? Um, what doesn't work is we try to do like a Mexican mole hot dog, with like a turkey sausage, it didn't work at all. <laughs> Even with the sesame seeds, it's no good. <laughs> but then things that you never think would work, work. Like we do a beef frank topped with peanut butter and jelly and Captain Crunch cereal, and it's just unbelievable. <laughs> if you can get someone to try it, they love it forever. <laughs> After some hard thought, I'm going Greek. A little lamb sausage, some cucumbers in there. It's kind of like a Greek salad and a gyro mixed together. The Greek dog from Man Bites Dog. I'm about to be the man that bit the dog. Mmm, the lamb sausage mm. is delicious. It's seasoned so well, and this bun, it's actually a kolache roll, is so soft. And the toppings, you can see, are falling off and they're getting all over my face. Best hot dog I've ever had. I'm definitely full. But I think I got one more in me. Can't forget about dessert, because you know the trailer city. If you non-arrested development fans didn't catch it, Bananarchy is a banana stand. Frozen bananas in true blue family form, dipped in white, dark, milk chocolate or peanut butter and rolled in everything from peanuts to crushed coffee beans. Started by Uber fans, Anna and Laura. I was watching Arrested Development. I watched all three seasons back to back and I was like, I'm gonna open up my own banana stand. And the world needs frozen bananas, you know? Obviously. Like the world just needs it and they're not here. And you know, if no one else is gonna do it, then we're just, we're gonna do it, you know? We're gonna further the Bananarchist cause and yeah, give frozen bananas to the people. Now that's a cause I could get behind, and in appropriate fashion, I'm ordering the Job. Two bananas, double dip, chocolate, nuts, and two sticks to hold it up. Come on! <laughs> Come on! That is delicious. There's definitely money in the banana stand. This is yummy. But Austin is by no means just an eater's city. It's an artist city and an outdoorsman city. And we haven't even mentioned the music history of South Austin. One day alone just isn't enough time. But I do think it's time to play outside at one of Austin's best outdoor playgrounds, Zilker Park. Whether it's the ACL Fest, the Zilker Kite Fest, or just a lazy afternoon, Zilker Park is always full of folks enjoying the Texas sunshine. But like always, the sun can be brutal. Luckily, Zilker has the perfect solution. And smack in the middle of Zilker Park sits Barton Springs. I think the term urban oasis was created specifically for this place. For a nominal fee of one to three bucks, the oasis is yours for the day. With all the sunshine and crystal clear water you can handle. Folks have been swimming in Barton Springs for more than 200 years when the Spanish built a mission on its banks. When you come, I'd recommend a suit, a towel, something to float on, and a slight tolerance for pain. You see, Barton Springs is spring fed, which means the water is the same temperature year round. Cold. Oh, it's fresh. Fresh. But trust me, the pain is only temporary and well worth the rush of exhilaration. You get a little used to it and it doesn't get so bad. But at first, it takes your breath away. Plus, without the cold water, you'd lack a critical part of the Barton Springs two-step. Here's a quick lesson. Step one, cool off in the springs. Step two, heat up on the hill. And then repeat. Again, and again, and again. 
For an advanced move, try throwing in a nap somewhere along the way. There's really no place like Barton Springs in Texas. There's even an endangered salamander who calls it home. And as most public diving boards have gone stiff and lame, Barton's is still bouncing. The actual Barton Springs flows out from underground into the middle of the pool, pumping out an average 27 million gallons of water a day. The pool overflows into Barton Creek, great for four-legged day trippers, and then on into Ladybird Lake, a local favorite for hiking, biking, and paddling. Now I'm no stranger to paddling, but never standing up on a surfboard. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Okay, so this is Andy with Awesome Paddle Sports. And man, I'm excited to be here. I'm, I'm pumped about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a blast. So we're gonna go paddle boarding today, or supping, SUP, stand up paddle boarding. What's up? Yeah, right here, downtown Austin, on town lake. Learning curve is usually 10 to 20 minutes. So when you first get on the board, you're gonna feel a little wobbly, but it'll loosen up and then you're gonna have a blast. Cool. So. Feel like a pro already. Stand-up paddleboarding originated in Hawaii and caught on in coastal areas near the open ocean. But since it requires no waves, a little Austin company called SUP ATX decided to bring supping inland to lakes and rivers. Well, it was a good idea. The sport has taken off and the Austin-based SUP ATX is now the number one stand-up paddleboard manufacturer worldwide. It's definitely different than canoeing and kayaking, requiring a stronger center core and a bit more balance. <laughs> Andy's teaching me some SUP racing techniques, which being a first timer might be a bit <laughs> premature. There you go. There you go. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. <laughs> but as for the basics, I think I got the hang of this. It's totally unstable at first, but once you're out here, you get your sort of sup legs. It doesn't feel so bad. I think I like this a lot. Woohoo! And with that, <laughs> it's time for dinner. Now there's no shortage of choices, but while we're on a trailer hitch, let's stick with it. So this next set of trailers is a little strange because the food you're gonna get here is unlike any that you've ever had, much less out of a trailer. For the main course, odd duck farm to trailer. High class gourmet gone trailer fied. So it's just your normal everyday trailer food like uh, venison sausage, half a quail, uh, wild boar chili. You know, just your normal everyday stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. The Odd Duck serves a completely local and seasonal menu that changes at least a little every day. Odd Duck lists the local farms and gardens where they source all their ingredients. Pork from Rockdale, quail from Lockhart. We basically go with the, the closest, best ingredients that we can get um, in any form or fashion, whether it be vegetables, fruits, um, bread, anything. I always go over the quail. The quail is the business. Really? Yeah. The business. The business. <laughs> and then you gotta love this, right? You BYOB. BYOB, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I got the pork belly. It's delicious. The outside is crunchy. It's really moist. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Looks like I know what I'm getting for dinner. All right. One, two, three. Where to start? Where to start? It's the pork belly slider. This is the shrimp with Tex Matty rice. And this is the quail. I've never had pork belly. It's actually one of the fattest parts of the pig, but if you cook it right, it sort of caramelizes and crisps up on the outside. This is delicious. And one of the reasons I've never had pork belly is because I've never gone to the fancy restaurants that serve it. But here at a trailer, I'm game. Oh, everything is so fresh, so good, so just perfectly cooked. Mm. Half a quail, it's a lot tinier than I expected. But then again, quail aren't that big, so I don't know what I was thinking. That is really good. Oh, it's like a little tiny chicken wing for fancy people. This is five star food served on a tray out of a trailer in little uh, ballpark nacho containers. This is so good. But how to follow up my fine dining experience? Well, there's no need to leave the parking lot. Big fat donuts. That is all Gordo serves. Here's the menu. They've gotten extremely creative with the donut. Sweet ones over here. Son of a peach, 
coconut ones, cream cheese ones, cherry bombs, the blackout with brownie batter and brownie bites covered in chocolate. Are you kidding me? But then on this side of the board, the savory ones, the mother clucker, and then the flying pig. Bacon with maple syrup icing on a donut. You guys want to see me order that one, don't you? And I'm not going to let you down. Okay, bring on the bacon, baby. If it's delicious, chances are they've put it on a donut. Bananas, graham crackers, chocolate, fruit, peanut butter and jelly. Not fried until ordered, so it always comes out warm. Donuts are no longer just for breakfast, but that doesn't mean you can't put breakfast on top of them. Thank you. Thank you. This is the most ridiculous donut I've ever eaten in my life. Maybe the most delicious donut I've ever eaten in my life too. I'm not kidding. That is really good. I know I'm just killing myself as I'm eating it, but I can't stop. What a way to go. Luckily, the day's not over yet, and I've still got a shot at working off this food, or honky-tonking it off. Time to change out the flip-flops for cowboy boots. The two kinds of shoes that folks in Austin wear pretty well. You know we couldn't come to the live music capital of the world without hearing some live music, right? Oh! Whew. The Austin air is full of live music of all types, but this is still Texas, and the Broken Spoke is one of the best places to hear some of that good old Texas country. This is the world famous Broken Spoke on the south side of Austin, Texas. You come underneath the big old oak tree out there, you walk across the old dirt parking lot, you know darn good and well you're not at Carnegie Hall. This is the world famous Broken Spoke honky tonk. <laughs> if you didn't already know, this is Mr. James White, owner and founder of The Broken Spoke. My parents, you know, they would take me to Honky Tonks. I always had fun there, so I thought, well, you know, when I get out of the Army, I'm going to go ahead and open me up a place of my own, and I'll have food, and I'll have beer, and I'll have good country music. We'll have a lot of fun. That's what a Honky Tonk is all about. Yeah. You bring your best girl to a place like this, and that, then you get to Honky Tonka, you know. <laughs> I was blessed that I get to book some heroes of mine that I grew up listening to, uh, Bob Wills and Ernest Tubb, Tex Ritter, Roy Cup, and plus a lot of new guys that pretty close to my age, uh, like Willie Nelson, you know, and Dolly Parton, and I had them all out here. And it's yeah, it's something when you call Willie Nelson one of the new guys. <laughs> That's when you know this place has been around a while. We're in the tourist trap room, the best place to walk through the years past, which looks strikingly similar to the years present. You know, as much as Austin changes, some things always stay the same. I ain't changing nothing. I ain't getting no Pierre water, no great Poupon. But I do have cold beer, good whiskey, and good looking girls to dance with. So, what else do you need? <laughs> I think that is a formula that's going to last for the next hundred years. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and on and on it goes as folks of every generation come out to experience a real Texas honky tonk. True, it is no Carnegie Hall, but it's better. Somewhere between boots and sandals, in high rises and trailer parks, is a town called Austin. It's true, Austin is weird, but aren't we all? Well, partners, the fiddles are calling me home. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. And then behind that's UT. Yeah, <laughs> Ah, this is a good gig. Bobby Flay, throw down. On ship! <laughs> wrong boot, wrong foot. <laughs> yeah, it's taking forever. Sir, you're taking too long. You're holding up the line. Oh, I apologize for that. An apology not accepted. Yeah, it's like he's my dad or something. Get out of here. Go away. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be mine? Won't you be mine? This is PBS, actually, right? A little Mr. Rogers for you.
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy y'all, Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.